Never waste a good crisis. And when it comes to the economic crisis, don't waste it when it, it can have a very positive impact. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. The way we're going to win over the long term is not just militarily. We've got to win over uh, hearts and minds. And what that means is we've got to invest in countries that uh, have no educational infrastructure, have no uh, means for young people to, to get ahead. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. Stay tuned for Politics and Religion. Climate fears in Great Britain are quickly turning into doubts about the truth of man-made global warming. Last month, hundreds of environmental activists crammed into an auditorium in London to ponder an anguished question. If the scientific consensus on climate change has not changed, why have so many people turned away from the idea that human activity is warming the planet. Nowhere has the shift in public opinion been so pronounced as in Great Britain. Great Britain was somewhat the epicenter of global warming promotion, with the East Anglia University supplying most of the research for the United Nations about the supposed problem of global warming. Now with the publishing of 160 megabytes of emails, many of them saying we have to hide the decline. We will not honor freedom of information request. We're not going to give them the data that they're wanting to look at. With all of this deception going on, it became obvious to many people in Great Britain and around the world that there were some dishonest things happening, that there was another agenda than merely trying to protect the planet from global warming, that in fact there was a purpose behind all of this climate change hysteria that really it was being used to drive the move toward one world government normally called global governance. Well, once all this came to light and many other things also were exposed as fraudulent, for example, the Himalayan glaciers that supposedly were melting at an unprecedented rate, well, that proved not to be true at all and that it had never actually issued from a reputable scientific journal, but had actually only been in a term paper of a college student. And yet somebody grabbed that and said, oh, here's something else to prove our point. And so they published it as though it was something to be believed around the world. Now, we went to Copenhagen to the climate change conference equipped with some of this information to convince the nations of the world to totally revolutionize the entire world. They were looking forward to Copenhagen as the beginning of true world government. Al Gore went there saying that the Arctic oceans would be totally melted by 2035. And the very scientists that he quoted as having told him that within a day or two said, whoa, wait just a minute. I did not say that at all. So the global warming crowd was thrown into total chaos. Well, it doesn't stop. It's continuing on today because now we have reports such as persistent cold, wet weather delays crop harvest is worrying farmers. Late spring snowstorm surprises the people of Utah. It's the latest snowstorms in all of history. So what happened to the global warming? Uh, was this a big hoax? Uh, and if there was man-made global warming, was it going to be the catastrophe that most people thought that it would be? Well, that's one of the big things out there now. I promise you, they're going to try to revive this issue, but it's not been easy because we just came through one of the coldest winters in a long, long time. Temperatures have not increased over the last 10 years in spite of a dramatic increase of carbon dioxide emissions. Now, the theory is carbon dioxide emissions go up, the temperature goes up. 
it's not working. Something is wrong with the theory. Something is wrong with the model. And yet they're asking all of us to sign a climate change agreement that will actually tax all of our carbon emissions. Now, if carbon emissions do not cause global warming, then it's a non-issue because carbon dioxide is necessary for plants to grow. Uh, it's everywhere. We all breathe out. Every time we exhale, we breathe out carbon dioxide. The plants take it in, process it, and then they give off their own particular emissions, which we then in turn, there, there's a delicate balance, and it's a wonderful balance. It's part of the creation of Almighty God. And so now they're trying to say there's something wrong with this. We can't breathe so deeply. We can't emit so much carbon dioxide. And yet it looks like the whole case is coming unraveled at the scene. So what's going to happen to climate change? What's going to happen to cap and, cap and trade? Uh, well, it's an interesting question, isn't it? North Korean President Kim Jong-il has ordered his armies to prepare for war. If World War III began today, what would you do? World War III is coming. The only question is when. Do you know what you will do when it happens? We'll discuss it on today's edition of Politics and Religion. Look, there are two things I don't discuss. Politics and religion. In my house, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. I'll talk to you about anything except politics and religion. I never talk about politics and religion. Politics determines how we'll live here on Earth. Religion determines how we'll live forever. I'm Irvin Baxter. I think it's time we talk about it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of a serious program today, but necessary, because emanating from North Korea, from President Kim Jong-il, is the threat to mobilize his armies for war. You know by now that a South Korean ship was shot down. It was sunk. Forty-six South Korean uh, sailors died now South Korea claims it has evidence that this particular attack order was given by the head of North Korea himself, Kim Jong-il. Kim Jong-il is reacting violently. He is saying, if you're going to say that we're the cause of the sinking of that ship, we are going to consider that as an act of war. So there's charges, there's counter charges. Uh, South Korea has now placed loudspeakers all along the border, and they're going to rev up the music real loud. They're going to dr use uh, very powerful music to drive the North Koreans out of the demilitarized zone. So the ante is being driven upward right now. Now, we've known for a long time, if you named five potential places on Earth that could become the spark for World War III, that the North Korean-South Korean dispute is one of those five. So consequently, when something happens, we have to take a very sober and serious look at it. Now, here's what I want to do today. We refer to World War III a lot in this program because it's a prophecy that's going to be the most impacting prophecy in the last 2,000 years. We're talking about a war that's going to kill 2 billion human beings. Never been 